March 24th, 2008, in an Arizona movie theater, a thought-to-be former MLB player is spending his newfound downtime watching a film. Now, we don't know which movie he was watching, but by looking at the highest grossing movies of 2008 that were in theaters around this time, we can reasonably guess that it was Horton Hears a Who. Some point during the film, he receives a text. Hey, you're not with the team. Can you call me? Without hesitation, he runs out of the theater and calls the man who texted him. The man picks up almost immediately. It's Red's manager, Dusty Baker. Hey, so, uh, Alex Gonzalez just blew out his knee. We need an infielder. Can you get to Sarasota, Florida in, let's say, three, maybe four days? He answers, I will be there tonight. Our man is Jerry Hairston Jr., and he's just been given a second chance of a lifetime. <laughs> But hey, before we begin, did you know that this video topic was a recommendation? If you like what you see here and would like to recommend a video topic of your own, please email me at nomorefielders at gmail.com. And hey, while you're here, you might as well tap that like button and smash subscribe if you haven't already. Jerry Hairston Jr. came from a baseball family. His grandfather, Sammy, played several seasons with the Birmingham Black Barons and Indianapolis Clowns before cameoing for the White Sox in 1951. His father, Jerry Hairston Sr., was a pinch-hitting specialist for those same White Sox. Uncle John had a brief stint for the Northside Cubs in 1969, and his younger brother Scott was a key piece for a young Padre squad. This gives the family the distinction of being tied for the most members to play in the major leagues, a number that I believe will eventually be challenged by the Trout family when Mike's great-grandson Gordon debuts alongside his twin brother Timothy for the Portland Pickles Major League squad in 2102. Jerry himself was drafted in the 42nd round by the Baltimore Orioles in 1995 as a light-hitting second baseman. He played well enough in the minors to find himself in a role backing up Orioles incumbent Delano DeShields. Hey, another guy with related blood in the majors. How neat. Hairston would secure the starting role at second base in 2001, and he was... alright. He'd have a much better 2002, albeit in a much smaller pool of games. Eventually, Hairston would find his niche by becoming a super, super utility player. Now, what do I mean by... Super utility player. How are they better than just a regular old schmuck utility player? Well, to me, a regular Joe in this role can only play up to five or six positions in a single season. Super. Utility players are an exclusive group who have played every position besides catcher and pitcher in a single season, which he became the 24th member of in 2006, an accomplishment that would be helmed by your weird uncle's favorite players, such as, did I do that? Steve Lyons, Tyler Saladino World, Chad Pins and Needles Pinder, and the guy who was perpetually giving the face of someone who found out his dog just died right after winning the lottery, Danny Santana. Despite this crazy rare accomplishment, seriously, only 34 players have ever done this, Hairston struggled mightily for a Cubs team looking to right their ship before donning the unfortunate association of being the first MLB team to have a 100-year World Series drought. His struggles led to a mid-season trade to the Rangers, where his performance improved, but we're talking the same way you improve on the lowest point in your life by deciding to occasionally brush your teeth. On the surface, his hitting struggles were getting to a point of beyond repair. But what Harrison and his team's medical staff didn't realize was that he was playing through a broken rib for about a year and a half. Now, we don't really know who to eschew this blame onto. As previously mentioned, Hairston came from a gridded baseball family, even attributing his at times unbearable pain to just being old. But given some of the questionable handling of injuries the Cub staff showed around this time, it's safe to say both parties shared equal blame. But one fact we knew for sure, a player with the rich appreciation for the game was out of a job and looking at the possibility of having to turn a lifetime of dedication and training over for what us squareheads call a real job. We've all been there. That moment where life throws just a few too many curveballs, and that notch in your stomach is calling you its home. Despite this, Jerry held out hope, and finally hope came, in the form of a busted ligament, and a manager who believes in second chances. Dusty Baker is widely regarded as one of the best player managers of all time. Getting a chicken at the plate wasn't as important as keeping Rick off a second where he could tie the game with a single. And all around, one of the most well-respected figures in the game. I mean, 
the dude smoked a joint with Jimi Hendrix and invented the high five for Pete's sake. Above all else though, he believed in giving every one of his players a fair shake. Dusty played seldomly against Jerry's father at the tail end of his playing career. He understood the passion for the game displayed by the Harrison family. He saw it firsthand when Jerry Jr. himself played with him during his Cubs tenure. Despite his struggles on the field, Harrison's hard work ethic and positive attitude made him a valuable presence no matter what. So when Red's incumbent shortstop Alex Gonzalez blew out his knee on that fateful March afternoon, there was no question in Dusty's mind who the man for the job was. Hairston came to camp with a renewed sense of purpose. He did have to spend some time in the minors catching up for what was effectively a lost spring training. But when Hairston made his Reds debut, not only did he regain his previous form, he was even better. <laughs> Hairston's bounce back was on unprecedented levels. Out of all players since 1969 to post that atrocious OPS plus of 36 or lower in the same amount of played appearances as Hairston or more, none of them even came close to his 126 OPS plus in their following season until Ryan Rayburn went sicko mode for the Cleveland Association in 2014. Now let's not fool ourselves. Hairston's sample size was quite smaller than a full season. But what's amazing here is that players aren't supposed to bounce back from the depths of hitting hell the way Hairston was able to, no matter if it's an overmatched prospect, a backup catcher, or a veteran in the twilight of their career. Players who reach those lows are typically seen as damaged goods, and are rarely ever able to capture peaks that outmatch their valleys. What could have been a prematurely short career turned into a resurgence that extended Hairston's playing days by six seasons. So. What did Harrison do with those six seasons? Well, he won a World Series with the Yankees, got to play alongside his brother in San Diego, got to go a little buck wild in a very low key classic NLDS between the Brewers and Diamondbacks in 2011, and ended his career with the Dodgers in the beginning of their run of eight straight division titles. Oh, and according to baseball reference, he made roughly 55.5% of his career earnings during this time all from someone who spent a March day in 2008 reflecting on what he thought was a close chapter in his life. We often underestimate the role that managers play in today's game. All in-game decisions are predetermined by the front office. The coaching staff is responsible for player development. Managers are basically a glorified PR rep for the team. But in these shifts of responsibility comes new areas for opportunities. Sure, Dusty Baker has been criticized in the past for leaving starters out to dry in the playoffs, and the World Series 2002 ball handling incident isn't talked about nearly enough. But this all demonstrates Dusty's key to success, and that is confidence in his players. Now, confidence can't be measured, but it can be shown. Over the course of his managerial career, despite the ups and downs, Dusty has always remained consistent for the belief he's shown in his players, even during the roughest of times. In a sport where an inch is the difference between a home run and a pop-up, Dusty understands that even the most innocuous of actions can go a long way in his players' careers. When the Astros were in search of a new manager in the wake of their cheating scandal, they needed to bring in someone who would first and foremost put his players ahead of anything else, knowing the long path to redemption they had before them. 
they needed someone who believed in second chances. In their eyes, Dusty Baker was the obvious choice. The unshakable trust he puts in his players, no matter their circumstances, no matter their perceived struggles on and off the field. Sometimes, it can lead to the rightful continuation of a once thought dead career. And other times, it can lead to something even bigger. Runner, fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker, this time they finish the job!